Um, I just think the the. I think that there's a couple of things that you know. It's interesting. One of the one of the reasons I think we don't get an audience is that we don't we don't put the same money into promotion as we do, as as the states does, for example. So when Little Mosque was launching in its first year, the CBC really went nuts. And I think with uh, when when Kirsten joined the CBC, she tried to pull together and unify departments. And we were in a meeting where there was going to be a big promo meeting and we said we really want to be there as producers and they said well it's not really how it's done and we said no we really want to be there as producers so I think we can speak about our product better than anybody and we should be at that table and and Kirsten agreed and pulled together these this group of like 40 people in our first meeting which was marrying all of these departments who were at that time you know in her previous or previous to her joining CBC were working kind of separately, like a project would come in and this department would do this and this department would do that. And this, we really built a unified promotional campaign around the launch of Little Mosque on the Prairie. And we launched with a record high of like 2.1 million viewers. Getting people onto the channel or getting people onto a program or at least introducing them to something um, is extremely important. And that promotional machine that does that is I mean, it's not as important as the content which is going to live on that slot, in that time slot, but it's extremely important to get people there the first time so they can decide if they're going to stay. There's a lot of shows that I see in Canada in a, in a, um, as it's going by, and I'm like, I, I, didn't know, I didn't know that was, I didn't know that was on, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of it is that we're always putting our kids to bed during primetime programming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so we'll catch it sort of on the on the sly, but there's shows um, like um, Living, in, Living in My Car. I haven't seen a single episode of that. It launched without any promo that I'm aware of, that I've seen, and I, I noticed that stuff. So I think getting people into seats has to be, um, you know, when we're budgeting for shows and we're budgeting for these things that our, our broadcast partners or even inside of our own budgets, you know, we'll put some promotion dollars aside to just try to draw people in, to just introduce them, to just say, here's your seat, have a seat, stay with us for as long as you think. And if we don't earn their ongoing viewership, then that's either a matter of their taste, a matter of our execution, a matter of our choice of story, whatever. But there's responsibility on, on both sides, on the producer side to get it made, and on our broadcast partner sides to help figure out how we can bring money forward to really promote the heck out of stuff give it a chance. Just give it a chance. Just give things a chance to bubble. It, what, that sort of marketing room that they set up for the first year of Little Mosque, was that an anomaly or is that sort of a new no, approach? No, they've, they've, um, they've taken that, that approach. So you see around the launch of their shows and I think then it depends on, we ended up launching in a January slot so we were sort of the only thing launching at that time in the first series of the show. <clears throat> and so there was a lot of attention put on that by every department. I think in the fall launches, it's harder to get that kind of singular focus or, um, or traction, but it's important nonetheless, right? So whatever you can do as a producer to partner with your broadcast partner to understand that, you know, however we do it, if it's camels in Dundas Square, you know, when we launched Little yeah. Mosque, we <laughs> brought the cast down and we had some cast, just think any little thing that we can create a buzz around um, is essential. And that's, I think, part of the business that people feel sometimes like that's a sellout. <clears throat> you know, the marketing or the advertising or the promotion, that that somehow cheapens the product or something. And I just don't think so. I think it's just a huge it's, part of the it's equation. It's respecting your audience, really. Uh, yeah. A huge part of it, I think, is respecting your audience. Because if you're not willing to recognize where, where their tastes are and, and what they appreciate, and put that into your film or your television program, then, then you're just making it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so then that was the other thing that CBC did really well in those first seasons of Mosque is we really did some very intensive focus testing, you know, with Muslim audiences, with non-Muslim audiences, with, with Muslim and non-Muslim audiences together, and we really tried to hear, you know, what characters were resonating, what story, what they thought it was about, what they understood, what they didn't understand, because with a show like that. You need to hear from your audience because you're both, you're, you're introducing them to a, a culture or a religion that they may not know. You're using language. Um, 
that they may not have ever heard before. And so how much of that can you infuse into the show without just simply confusing or alienating your audience? Um, so and and it, raises an inter it raises an interesting um, question, really, too, because on one hand, you want to know, as I said, what, what your audience thinks, you know, what they appreciate about it, what they don't like about it, and try to take that into account as you go or forward. Or know it, but yeah. But on the other hand, <laughs> it's also true that uh, you can't assume that the general public um, understands what it is that you're trying to say either. You know, and if, if you just go to, to the general public and just try to tailor something for the general public, then you may come up with some bland fare that everybody's complaining about on television now. It's just bland. It isn't following any, any vision. So, so it's a mix of those two things. You know, for us, one of our, actually it was one of our financiers who said, you guys have really taken on a challenge because the window of the things that you want to do is quite narrow. So it's hard enough to try to sell programs to a broadcaster without imposing on ourselves, which we do, this narrow window of things that we're interested in. And we really aren't that interested in just doing something else to, to, um, to support the company. We do do that. We have a lot of lifestyle shows and so on, which we, which we value, but it isn't a, a huge heart issue for us. But the scripted things we want to do, these are about something. And they aren't necessarily what the broadcasters are looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, we do think it's what the uh, audience is looking for, yeah. even if they don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs>